All right, we've been talking about the stock market this morning. We've been talking about the jobs market this morning. Let's talk about foreign markets. We got Tom White here with me in the studio, and we got Anthony Sassine joining us from Crane Shares, senior investment strategist. Uh, Anthony, welcome back to the show. Uh, as we talk, though, about foreign markets, we're going to kind of skew it through one of our favorite internationally uh, linked companies, Tesla, and now politically linked. Uh, what do you think the relationship for Tesla and China is going to look like? Uh, I, I think it's it's going to be good. It's, uh, he's going to use this relationship to try to fix the relationship with the U.S. Uh, and be uh, a link between President Trump and President Xi. Uh, to, uh, Elon Musk have given China huge importance since the beginning of Tesla, and China has been very good to Elon Musk too, uh, especially with setting up his first uh, factory in Shanghai in record time in eight months. He has a close relationship to the uh, uh, premier, Chinese premier, uh, Li Keqiang. And uh, now also China is giving uh, Elon Musk uh, uh, access to 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 trade its FSD and and you know uh, do, giving him the right to be able to to uh, train and and develop its FSD, which is not available yet in the U.S. So I think it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to play out. Okay, Tesla chart just looks unstoppable. What's the best way to get exposure to Tesla through your guys' funds? Yeah, no, I mean, Tesla has had a really amazing run uh, since the uh, last few months, especially after the election of President uh, Trump. And the media uh, uh, coverage of, of Elon Musk has been actually uh, positive this time, right? And it's been helping the stock and actually giving it momentum and giving uh, the stock hope. But if you uh, dig a little bit deeper, uh, Oliver, nothing has changed much for Tesla. I mean, here are some of the positives that we've learned over the past few few months, right? So one is uh, CyberCab looks great and it's there. Uh, you know, it could, it could go in 2026, but it still needs FSD to be up and running, which is not yet. Uh, two robots uh, are actually making drinks and serving pizza. You know, that's also uh, kind of a, a, an improvement uh, in Tesla. We're also uh, seeing Tesla make, make ways in, in, in renewable energy. And, uh, and now, hopefully soon, we're going to get the cheaper car from Tesla, which is the 25K, which is, in my opinion, the most important uh, uh, the most important aspect of Tesla in next year. Because if you look at growth for Tesla, in 2025, it's still projected to be between 20 and 30 percent, according to Elon Musk. That's well below the 50 percent target that he put when he first initiated uh, the company. So uh, Tesla is not fully out of the woods yet, but it has a lot of amazing opportunities ahead of it for a long term and really, really big opportunities in autonomous and robotics and energy and, and, you know, and electric vehicles. But in the next year or two, it's going to face a little, little bit of challenges. Right. But, uh, you know, if anyone can do it, it's Elon Musk. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I see Tesla in at least two of your funds, CARS, K-A-R-S, um, and then A-G-I-X, your artificial intelligence ETF. In the latter, the AI ETF, Tesla's currently at about a 3% weighting. In your electric vehicles fund, CARS, Tesla's about a 3.6% weighting. I guess that one I'm a little bit more surprised by. Is that low, Anthony, or um, you got BYD up there, a few others? Tell me about that holding. You know, that's that's uh, by design, right, Oliver, because we wanted to build a fund that provides a full exposure to the EV ecosystem. If I let a Tesla run, it would be at least 30 percent of the fund, which is uh, I don't think investors want that. So basically, we have a, we have a max uh, allocation to 4 percent per per holding and 40 percent per sector. That, that's why you see that the top 10 are much more diversified between between uh, electric vehicles, between batteries. Uh, you have even lithium companies in there, raw materials uh, and, and, and component companies. That's why we like cars, because it provides a balanced and comprehensive exposure to the EV ecosystem. The uh, uh, catch, though, is that if uh, the Tesla is pulling away and everyone else is kind of battling over scraps or trying to get off the ramp in China, it seems like those are going to be the underperformers. Is the argument then that there's too much of a premium in Tesla stock relative to the industry? Well, it's not it's not just Tesla. Arguably, BYD is doing better than Tesla this year. And even if you look at the Geely stock, sure, BYD it's is performing great. better than Tesla, which is hard. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, and so, so, so some of these companies are really leading in that space and even surpassing uh, Tesla. BYD just uh, did uh, 500,000 cars 
uh, in one month from a revenue perspective. It's it's outperforming Tesla, but still from the new energy or battery driven cars, it's still slightly uh, behind Tesla. But but BYD is also expanding globally to Europe, Latin America, and Africa, even in Asia. Uh, so so you have multiple great companies in the top ten. The cattle also is the leading battery maker and. Today, if you look at the cost of batteries, according to BNF, it's the, the China has a huge advantage. It's the cheapest uh, today. Uh, it's reaching $53 uh, per kilowatt, which is really low. And that's really getting the whole industry close to ice, uh, ice parity, which is uh, the point where we believe EVs will even take off uh, even more as, as you know, mass production and mass adoption mm. happens. So, so it's a great uh, top 10 with multiple companies in there. Some of them are look cheap as well. Uh, so, yeah, and it's not just Tesla. Got it. Uh, it seems like the kind of uh, wide scale industry growth is 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 the the um, uh, objective, because right now when you've got a few winners emerge like a BYD or Tesla, those charts ramp up. But then, uh, uh, you know, a basket is going to get stuck if it's capped uh, for the AI side. It seems like the weightings can drift a little bit more. Um, uh, give me a quick thought on that, Anthony. Yeah, no, that's a new fund that we launched recently focused on AI. And the beauty of that fund, it just it can invest in public companies and also a small portion in, in private companies. Uh, and it's it's actively ran mm. uh, by Aetna Lab. So we're very excited about that to kind of capture the uh, the AI uh, uh, opportunity. And, you know, it's going to get even more exciting when we start allocating to some of the really high, high profile uh, uh, private companies that are coming up in the pipeline over the next year or two. Good stuff. Hey, Anthony, just real fast on China generally, you guys think uh, China uh, uh, trades can hold up next year? I mean, China is very cheap, Oliver, as you can see, and very low positioning. And now the government is signaling that it's going to do anything it can to kind of bring that economy back, right? Especially with the big uh, stimulus that happened uh, uh, not too long ago. And we saw KWEB go up 50% in a very short period of term, a time. Uh, you know, investors are kind of realizing not having China is can hurt their portfolios. That's why you need to maintain an allocation. That's not to say there are no challenges coming up. You know, Trump is going to be one. But I think ultimately uh, with Elon Musk, as you mentioned, and Trump's uh, kind of uh, willingness and and uh, and uh, wanting to make a deal with China will ultimately prevail, hopefully in the first year or two. But there are some challenges along the way. And we want to see China do more stimulus to the consumer directly. Uh, we've seen the trading program do do amazing uh, with cars and appliances. We need more of that. Great stuff, Anthony. Thank you very much. Appreciate the walk through the details on the funds. Very helpful. Anthony Sassine, Crane Shares. All right, Tom, let's trade KWeb first. That's your first trade, KWEB. Yep. Up this morning by 1.7%, but stocks are also starting to ramp up. Yeah, uh, still only up about 14% so far this year. Remember, it's down 20% from those uh, the stimulus announcements uh, from October also, so it's down about 20% from those levels. Not a lot of option premium in KWeb, so I looked at a stock replacement type strategy. If you think that maybe going into 2025 that we're going to see some uh, some more gains back to those 52-week uh, highs that we saw uh, just about a month and a half ago. So going out to the February monthly cycle, so 77 days till expiration. Got over two months in this position where I'm going to buy the 30-strike call that's in the money. It's about a 68 delta, so that reacts more like the stock, and that's why we call just buying a deep-in-the-money call a stock replacement type strategy. Paying roughly about a 260 debit for those uh, – February 30 strike calls. It takes a break even for this position at 32.60 to the upside over the next uh, two and a half months. That's only about 4% above the current share price in there. And I mentioned it's got the higher delta. So if KWeb continues to grind uh, to the upside, you want it to get above 32.60, but anything above that break even is going to be profitability on this stock replacement buying a deep in the money call. All right, deep in the money call uh, for a trade that's been a little beaten down yep. here. We call that the Alan Nuckman. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, nice. Uh, hey, I don't hate it. K-Web has been finding some pretty decent support now for about a month. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Tesla. We're going to uh, go through the uh, uh, number that's coming out here in a second, by the way, because we got some yeah. sentiment coming. Uh, Tesla up about a percent. A big tech is also firming up here. Uh, up over 50% uh, so far uh, in 2024. So it's had a great run. It's had two and a half year highs here, getting a little bit stretched on those valuations, whether you value it as an EV stock, you know, it's, uh, it's elevated. Uh, if uh, you think it's something else uh, and uh, the Trump trade on the back 
uh, at the back of it and the relationship that they have. Uh, that's probably been the reason that we've seen this massive rally. It was up 38% just in the month of uh, November. Uh, but I looked at a strategy that takes advantage of maybe this thing's gone up too far too fast, getting a little bit of stretched on the technical basis. But if it does st still continue to grind up a little bit, you can still remain profitable. But this is a neutral uh, to slightly bearish type strategy here on this mm. one, uh, where I'm going to buy an unbalanced call butterfly. But I'm Tread taking softly, a, Tom. I'm try. I'm taking in a credit on this one, so I'm get, <laughs> giving myself a cushion. Back off a little bit on me here. Let me explain this position, this strategy. December twentieth. Monthly cycle, so two weeks to expiration, really short-term positioning. Uh -huh. Buy one of the 385 strike calls, sell two of the 390 strike calls, and then buy one of the 415 strike calls. I'm taking in a credit of about $3.80 on this. Now, anything below 385, that's what I that's what I profit on this one. Three three dollars and eighty-five or eighty cents, three hundred and eighty bucks, right? Uh -huh. Now. You can see here from the risk profile, it continues to grind higher, gets at or around that 390 strike, which is, you know, over $15 above the current all share right, price. Okay. You get a little kicker in there. You all get right, some more profitability. Bearish. No, it's not at all. Bearish. It's neutral. All right. uh, uh, and then uh, that break even, if you, if you collect a credit of 380 on this unbalanced call butterfly, you break even 398.80 over the next two weeks. That break even is about six and a half, seven percent above the current share price. So mm. while I like it's this yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. if it does continue to grind higher, maybe you don't think it's going to. But if it does, you can still profit on this one. Sure, you profit in three out of four scenarios. You just don't want it to go above 415 or anything above that break even just below uh, 400 bucks a share got it because then you start losing yep right it's you got not a lot like of you're capped out right. you start losing if it goes but then how easy do you suspect it would be to just get out of the trade well that's the whole thing it's a two-week trade the whole idea is hey if it grinds up towards 390 uh -huh. maybe this thing uh, allows it out you to get out the of it early yeah or, or you bail i would probably keep this on until expiration okay there we go all right now <laughs> we cut to the chase okay you're gonna have to basically gut it out if the thing starts hey to rip. it's all about probabilities and they're in mm -hmm. your favor on this trade especially after that. the ramp yep. up technical yep. over technically overbought it's a it's a frisky little trade. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it because it's like okay, I'll be a part of it, but I think you guys betting above four hundred, you're you you're yeah. you're losing it. Hands off on that one for me. Okay, all right, fair enough. Okay, fun. I like it. Thanks, Tom. Mm -hmm. a good trade there. Okay, uh, hoping Tesla stays below four hundred bucks.